Welcome to General Structures 2, Lateral Forces, Lesson 5, Wind Design Example, Part 4. And we are on page 135, and it says the it says connection of roof diagram to east and west shear walls. It says refers to the earthquake design example on page 112, which should be the maximum spacing of the anchor bolts to transfer the diaphragm shear into the walls. And if you remember, this is kind of what our building looks like. This is the long dimension, like 150. This is the 60 dimension. And it has a parapet that comes up. All right, here's my quick freehand sketch. And if you remember, we have a, whoops, we have this wind force that's being distributed to this, some of it's going into the, the foundation and some of it's coming up here, Every, everything from the parapet and half, the upper half of this wall. Is going to be going through this roof di diagram. That's what you need to design it for. And if you go back, you can remember that we had what 10. I think this was 102 PLF, and this is let's see, I think it was 150 foot. This was 60 foot. So when we had WL over two, that would be what. 102 PLF times L, which was 150 over 2, and that gets our reaction or, and our max shear. If you remember our shear diagram, 102 times 150 divided by 2 is 76. 50, and that's going to be PLF times 70 pounds. <clears throat> so that's just that, and then remember, we take it um, and we divide that by 60. So 7,650 pounds divided by the depth of the beam, which is 60 pounds equals 127.5. Okay, and that's going to be PLF. So in essence, you know that you have right here at this wall right here you can you have 7650 pounds of shear and you need to um, spread that over 60 feet so i hope that makes sense you need to somehow uh, resist that 7650 pounds of shear and you can do that by putting anchor, anchors like that in that wall the top of the wall all right so the question is it says how many, well, which is maximum spacing of the anchor bolts? What should be the maximum spacing of the anchor bolts to transfer the diaphragm shear into the walls? And right ahead of that, it says reference to the earthquake, refer, sorry, to the earthquake design example on page 112. And if you go to 112, 115, 115, it says connection of the roof diaphragm to east and west shear walls. And it says, assume an allowable load of 1,400 pounds per bolt. So we say 1,400 pounds per bolt. And what do we need to take a look at? Actually, let's go ahead and write this line right on top. Uh, and I'll do this per bolt. Actually, let's not do that. I'll tell what was earlier. And then we're going to. What do we need to do here? Oh, pounds per foot. 127 pounds per foot. So if we have 1,400 pounds per bolt. And we have 127 pounds per foot that we need to resist, so it should be around what? Well, about 
10, 10 plus, maybe 11, 11, about 11 feet. So I take that times 11, you'll get about that. So anyways, let's go ahead and do the math. So if you have 1,400 pounds per bolt, and then you divide that by 127.5, that's pounds per foot, you're going to end up with foot per bolt. And 1400, 1400 divided by 127.5, and you get 10.98, so about 11 foot. 11 foot. So it's, it's, it's saying that you need 11 foot spacing, but if you go into the um, the study guide, you'll see, and if you remember on the earthquake example, that the standard um, common practice is to space anchor bolt, bolts at one board and four foot on center. So 11 foot per bolt is, whoops, is greater than four foot use four foot spacing. And that is that answer, is to use four foot spacing for your anchor bolts for your shear. So you'll put four foot spacing over here, and you do the same over here, four foot spacing and four foot spacing, even though you know that this side is going to control because it has a shallower depth, if that makes any sense, hopefully it does. This, the 60 is shallower than the 150, and it has a wider area for the wind to hit. I hope that's intuitive for you. If it's not, just take a look at it and actually go through this process looking at it, on, go looking at it on this side of the building. You know, take the, what is it, it would be 102 PL, yeah, I'm, I may be wrong here, but I'm assuming it's 102 Let's do that real quick, actually. 102 PLF over here, and you have a 60 foot, so we can do the WL squared. We'll just sit over here and say 60 foot. So 102 times 60 divided by two equals 3060. Oh, oh. So you're gonna have 3060 pounds is gonna be your reaction or your max shear. Those are the same. And then you're going to take that and you're going to divide it by 150 is your depth. So 36 divided. I'm trying to keep it somewhat. Let's just do it right here. 306 zero pounds divided by 150. And that's going to equal 20.4. I mean, so far, you can see that 20.4 is much less than 127.5. And then if you want to divide this out, you can say 20.4 right here, PLF equals what? 1400 divided by 24. It's actually 68.6 per bolt. So as you can see, that is much greater than four foot, and you'll also use four foot spacing for your bolts. All right, and that makes that should make sense. I hope that makes sense to you, where you can see. Well, yeah, you're going. If you, you just take a look at this building and say, well, um, it's going to be much more stable this way than it will be this way, and that should make sense because it's got a a long, longer moment arm. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you please post something and I can hopefully go back and try to explain that a little bit better. But I'm assuming by now that it is, um, I'm assuming it's quite intuitive by now. All right, I hope that helps and I will see you on your next video.